Well, here we are a couple days later. I've pulled the chassis out of the Admiral 24A12, leaving the lower chassis behind, which has uh, the power supply and audio amp. It uh, makes it a lot easier to work on because uh, most of the weight is contained down here, making the upper chassis a lot easier to work on. So I had no problem pulling this out and getting on the workbench. I also pulled out the pitcher tube, which would normally be sitting up here in this depression. This wire here makes contact with the outer conductive coating on the cathode ray tube to ground it. And these two pads cushion it. And here's the high voltage lead. And there's a deflection yoke. And finally the uh, focus coil, just like an electromagnet. So here's the uh, high voltage suction that was giving me trouble. There's the fuse down below that kept blowing. So uh, I've been, uh, you know, inspecting this. Um, these two resistors up here were a little puzzling. Until I realized that the upper one, there's actually no connection to the top of this at all. So this, I, this is apparently the old original one, and when I measured it, it's, it's open. So this must be an old repair where somebody bypassed it with this green resistor, which is uh, pretty close to the right value. Even though it looks smaller, newer resistors um, can handle higher wattages and smaller packages, so I think that's okay. Aesthetically, I'd really like to use this nice big glossy resistor and pull out this green one, but I'll save that for after this sets up and running. I've already tested the flyback and it tested good. I also cleaned this up a bit. Um, these white ceramic standoff insulators were all black before. For, the high voltage circuit tends to attract uh, dust and soot and this can get quite dirty. Here's the high voltage capacitor I was, looking, I was kind of curious about earlier where it might be located. Well, it turns out it's underneath everything. Something else I thought was kind of curious is this high voltage lead when it comes down goes to sort of this brass button here, which underneath is soldered not only to the output pin on the tube, on the rectifier tube, but also this metal collar and then this metal ring below that. I asked about that online and the thought was that having all this metal at uh, that high voltage kind of makes this like an equal potential area here which um, prevents arcing from any sharp points that might want to arc uh, to the ground, the ground plane below which would be the chassis. Anyways that all looked and measured pretty good, so I started taking a look underneath. And if I haven't mentioned it enough times before, the usual culprit in anything vintage is the capacitors. Uh, but I discovered there actually had been quite a few repairs already in this set. Like this uh, bright orange Mallory here, and a green one down here, and this yellow guy here. And the date code's like 8409. I mean that this was capacitor was made in the ninth week of 1984, so uh, yeah, it was 26 years ago. But that's nowhere near as old as uh, the other parts, which were made in 1949. So I started working my way back from the high voltage output, testing resistors and replaced a few that were bad. Like here's a new one here, 68 ohm. I used a metal film 1% resistor in place of the old ones which like these are carbon film and tend to drift up in age and a lot of these are about 20 30 percent higher than they should be but that's an acceptable range for uh for this set so i'm just going to leave them in there for now and uh, i started putting my own new capacitors in like this yellow guy here and back there and these big orange guys here and all these yellow caps up in here and then uh, worked my way over to the electrolytic. Oh, I should say, after I replaced all these plastic wax ca caps, I powered it up and the fuse blew again. So that left one culprit in this area, which was the three suctioned electrolytic can cap here. And usually electrolytics are the first to go, but because the other electrolytics, like in the power supply and audio amps, seemed to be okay, I was thinking maybe this one had been replaced. Uh, and it'd be okay, but uh, that was the most likely thing left. So what I did was I left it in place, but removed the connections below and put in one, two, 
three modern caps just tacked in to see if it's to see if that solves the problem once I get this side working I will pull out that old metal can gut the insides and stuff these three caps back inside to make this a neater job so I think it's time for me to uh, flip this chassis down I'll put in my little five inch test pitcher tube and let's fire this puppy up and see if it works any better now okay here we go uh, I did discover one downside of having to split chassis it does make it a little tough to work on unless I pull out both chassis and put up on my workbench um, I'm a little lazy I don't feel like doing that right now so I do have the one cable with all the power lines going to it but I cannot reach over for the audio cable so uh, don't expect to hear any sound when I turn this on assuming it even works uh, I should point out something about safety you should never do what I'm about to do which is to run this without covering back up that high voltage box and having the safety interlock on normally all that high voltage stuff would be under this big steel box here but uh, I've worked on a few TVs and uh, I'm, I'm gonna stay away from that area now if you ever do want to measure the high voltage output to make sure that it, uh, it's functioning right you can use something like this which is a Pomona high voltage probe it goes up to about 36,000 volts this set only runs at about 9,000 so it's well within the range of this the way you use this is it um, doesn't run any batteries or anything and all you've got is one allig black alligator clip which you would clip the ground right there and then you've got the probe which in reality if you can see that it's clear plastic there's two uh, what they call candy stripe resistors in there which are super high resistant resistors in this case here's one that's 720 mega ohms and I'm not sure what the other one is probably something yeah, but they're both there's two 720 mega ohm resistors so we're looking at 1.4 giga ohms of resistance in this thing which is pretty substantial um, and what you would do is I carefully put this up either under the metal cap here or up on this ring here and flip the on button and read the uh, high voltage uh, I'm not going to do that right now though, but uh, I thought I'd point that out. So, um, there we go. Let's see what happens. Nice little hum when it turned on. Tubes are glowing. No light yet on the CRT though. Hey! How about that? I wasn't expecting that to come up so easily. <laughs> uh, focus is horrible. It's off center. Oh, that's a little bit better. Turn off the light on this camera so I can see that better. So, right. Yeah, it seems to be in business here. Let's see. I'm trying to use these controls without the knobs. I don't remember what they do because it's a pain to keep taking them off and on. So, that must be the brightness. That I believe it's contrast. So hey, not bad. It's a fine tuning. Alright, since I got this probe out, it's for the hell of it, I might as well measure that high voltage. Well, that's kind of nasty <laughs> sound there, and uh I don't know how accurate this is, but I'm reading right about nine kilovolts, so hey. Wow, that's yeah, you, <laughs> you can hear that. Yeah, that's high voltage. That's why you got to be careful. If you touch that, you might very well kill yourself. So be careful out there. All right. Well, let's pop on the full-size CRT and see how that guy works. <laughs> 